Hello and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful channel. This is my place to talk about all things knitting and crochet related and give you a roundup of all of my creative and crafty pursuits over the past few weeks. I've got a few finished things to share with you today which is brilliant because I had none last time. My name is Ali and I live in the very southeast of England in Kent where it is currently and I will mention this only once and then I will not moan about the weather, but it is currently very hot and sunny. It's 25 degrees today, not quite yet because it's only nine o'clock in the morning, but by Friday it's going to be 30 and I cannot cope. <laughs> That's the only time I'm mentioning it. I promise not to complain about the weather. I will just say now I'm looking forward already to autumn. That's not true. No, I'm making the most of summer and I am going to be making a little video about that on my other channel shortly so keep an eye out for that i'm on uh, this little wonderful life is my vlogging channel and you can also find me on ravelry and instagram as starry eyes alley uh what else do you need to know oh yes all of the links to everything i talk about show notes and chapters are in the description box underneath you just have to click the uh down arrow which side of the screen i think it's on this side of the screen here um and it will all be revealed do have a look because i do try to make sure it's as detailed as possible uh yeah so let's get started with finished objects oh hang on i wanted to say thank you to everyone for your really positive um reception is that the right <laughs> Um, your lovely comments and just being generally so lovely about my last video I did a kind of sew along with me video for bag making I made quite a few zipper bags I made a drawstring bag and I made a box pouch and I, I showed in detail how to make the drawstring bag and the zipper bags and I was a bit worried that it'd be too long and boring but as usual you've been so positive and so lovely about it so I'm really glad you enjoyed that video and, and thank you for letting me know it, may, it means a lot thank you oh, I'm hot already I'm gonna have a slurp of my tea I should probably be wearing shorts I'm wearing jeans do you like my mug it was a gift it was a gift from a vlog and podcast viewer called Jenny it was a complete surprise she knows I love lobsters from watching my channels and uh, sent me this lovely lobster mug and it came with its own coaster and a little tin and everything. The tin's lovely. I'm going to use it for keeping yarn minis in. So I've got my, my You're My Lobster mug with Ross and Rachel on it. <laughs> okay, is there anything else that I need to tell you before we start? It's Wednesday, I should say that. It's Wednesday, it's nine o'clock in the morning. I'd normally be at work on a Wednesday, but I've had to swap my days this week because my husband needs to be in the office today. And later this afternoon at one o'clock, I've got a work meeting on Zoom. And then at 2.30, I've got to be at the school for a school trip meeting <laughs> as well. So talk about cramming it in today. But this is the good part. This is the good part. I get to sit down with a cup of tea and talk about the stuff that I love. So I hope you've got a cup of tea or something stronger, depending what day you're watching I hope you've got your knitting or your crochet with you and let's get stuck into a nice long chat about creative and crafty lovely stuff finished objects I have got two finished things no, well and some bags as well I'll show you the, uh, some of the bags that I made as part of that tutorial so oh, what should I start with okay I'm going to start with a test knit that I did. I'll start with these because they're already on the blockers. So this is an amazing pattern that I test knit for Sylvia Watts Cherry. She is with Cherries on Top 2 on Instagram and she is an amazing knitwear designer. She's very well known for her, her Intarsia colourwork knitting. Um, you, you might know her jumper design with the Nubian Queen on the front. So yeah, that was a very famous uh, jumper design that she did, but she does a lot of classes about Intarsia and um, she's a UK designer um, and she's a lovely, lovely person as well. Anyway, um, I test knit her new sock pattern. It's called the Lynxfield Socks and it really kick-started my sock knitting mojo back into action doing this test knit. So, have I got this on the blocker very well? Probably not. It's got an absolutely gorgeous lace detail that's reminiscent. When I first saw the pattern pictures, I'm getting all tangled up trying to hold both socks. Let's put them together. 
When I first saw the pattern pictures, I thought, oh, that really reminds me of my old school socks. And then when she sent through a bit more detail about the inspiration behind the socks, um, she said that it was inspired by her old school socks and Linksfield is the name of her school. I won't say much more because obviously all the inspiration behind the socks will be in the pattern information. The pattern's going to be out I think in the last week of June. It was a totally absorbing knit. I knit it exactly to pattern. Um, I made no changes whatsoever and I couldn't be more delighted with these. I love them. They fit perfectly. They look great. There's also an Aberdeen connection because the school she went to uh, when she was growing up is in Aberdeen um, and that means a lot to me because Aberdeen is where my family are, where my mum is from, um, where she spent most of her childhood and where I spent a lot of my childhood holidays so that means a lot as well and this was a really absorbing lace pattern I had to really concentrate and I can't remember, I think it's an 18 row repeat and it was just brilliant because you can do 18 rows and then sort of pop it down or you can decide to do two repeats and they just knit up so quickly. I think I knit these in a day. I wasn't very well so I um, spent a lot of sofa time watching Netflix. I was really quite unwell the week before last so I did get some sofa time which I wouldn't normally get and I think I knit them in about a day and a half. I was obsessed with them. And I love them. And the yarn, by the way, I dyed myself. I've watched enough of Kay Jane's of the Bakery Bears <laughs> doing her My Favourite Colourways to pick up the odd thing. Uh, so I just kept layering. I don't have an extensive collection of um, uh, dyes. So it was just a combination, I think, red, brown, yellow and blue. And I just kept layering, layering them until I got the nice sort of deep, mossy colour that I wanted. So... Yeah, I am very, very pleased with these. I'm gonna hang them, oh no, I'm not, because I'm gonna need the blockers to show you the next pair. So my next finished object is also another pair of socks. Uh, so I was inspired, because I was so enjoying these, I was inspired to get going in other pairs of socks. So I finished a pair of shorty socks that I've had on the needles for quite a long time. So these are to use up uh, the yarn that I so, at Christmas, I met up with my friend Becky, who is the dyer behind Back to Blighty, Back to Blighty Yarns, and she had dyed me up my own special colourway just for me, and it's called This Little Wonderful Christmas. And it's so beautiful, and I made with it the Pearly Dot Socks by Sandra Paul of Cherry Harm. And I had enough left to do some shorty socks which I did. So this is the shorty socks I made with my special Christmas yarn from Becky. Oh, so pretty. For some reason my camera's not focusing automatically, multi-camera. It's lovely yarn. And then the contrast colour I used, I think this was from Craft House Magic. Um, and it couldn't have been a more perfect match. I'm so pleased with that blue with this yarn. And basically I just knit, I think I cast on 56, because that's what I normally knit my socks, because uh, I'm quite a loose knitter, so 56. And then I did a one by one twisted rib, I knit 10 rows. Then I did the heel flap and turn from Ellie of Craft House Magic's V for Valentine socks, uh, because it's got a really nice, oh, hang on, let me put it on my hand to show you. It's got a really nice, Oh, not, not V for Valentine socks, sorry. Candy cane socks. It's from her candy cane socks. So it's got a Christmas tree motif, basically, on the heel, which I shall now attempt to show you. I'm not sure if this is possible to show you, but you might just be able to see that it's got like a triangular Christmas tree motif on the heel there. So I did that just because these are plain shorty socks and... Uh, it just adds a little bit of interest and the toe is the umbrella toe, Kay Jones um, umbrella toe. So I'm really pleased with these. Uh, I may give them to Lilia because she loves shorty socks. But I've got another pair of socks which I'll show you in works in progress for Lilia on the go. So absolutely thrilled to bits with these. And I will hang these here on the door. Not that you can see them. <laughs> 
Okay, and then the other finished things I've got are some bags, because I did, like I said, I did my bag tutorial. I uh, haven't got them all here because some of them have already been sent off as gifts or stolen by the children. <laughs> uh, but I thought I'd show you some of them. Oh, I haven't actually added the drawstring yet. <laughs> So this is the drawstring bag I made, or at least it will be once I've added the drawstring. Uh, and this is the one featured in the video. I did some little handles and tabs and things. The uh, purple is an organic cotton and the denim is an old pair of jeans sort of mine. And this is actually going to be uh, part of the prize for the dodgy bag mail, which I'll announce later, which finished on the 5th of June. And I just lined that with a simple white, which is actually an uh, old cotton school shirt. So that's my first one. And then I've got three zippered bags here. Two of them are box bottom. Uh, this black and white one. It's got a lovely little box bottom to make it sit nicely. And I'm really pleased with how it looks with the yellow zip. I'm really thrilled with that. And I did, well, not, that's a little bit not very neat, but I like the, the khaki green with it as well. So I made that. And then my other box bottom is a little bit smaller. That's just with some old Ikea fabric and a blue zip. And I really liked that contrast. And I think this is the one with, yeah, it's got a really lovely bright yellow lining. And then finally I made one that doesn't have box bottom, which can also be really, really handy, uh, especially for putting in and out of your handbag with things. Actually, I might use this for that, for, you know, when, you've got, when you're changing your handbag over shove everything in it and then I lined that with the Ikea fabric and the fabric on the out of it is a really cute little people holding hands so yeah those are the bags that I made and some more besides as part of my tutorial so they count as finished objects don't they I think I can take those as finished objects and that is all of my finished things. So now I will show you works in progress. Now I feel like I've been showing you the same works in progress for quite some time because I've just been so slow. And then obviously I've done some new things which have kind of taken over the old works in progress. So I'm going to start with some new works in progress that you've never seen before because you know, despite the ever growing pile, I've added more to it. And also a resurrected older work in progress as well. So I'm going to start with my latest cast on, which is here. So living in my lovely handmade bag, this was a birthday gift from Anne, who lives in Guernsey. It's got this lovely, glorious orange and yellow themed patchwork. It's such a cheerful bag. And I've got my badge on here that my, well, Becky, who I mentioned before, who is back to Blighty, she saw this, she said and thought of me. <laughs> so I popped that on there as well. And in here, I have got all of the minis that I got for my birthday from uh, Henny Penny Makes. I got a lovely set of minis from my friend Hilary. And I really want, I was trying to think of a really lovely project that I could use them all in. And I came up with doing the litmus cow. Now I've seen a few people make this and I've always thought it looked like such a nice, neat thing and quite flexible in terms of what you can do with the stripes and I just, I just really like the idea of it. And also I was a bit worried about it because I knew it started with a, um, what do you call it when you start? Oh, this is my perimenopausal brain. I just forget the most random words. Um, when you start off with crochet, provisional, a provisional cast on. And I have done them before, but for some reason they always worry me a bit. And I don't know why, because they're not that difficult. So I've done a provisional cast on. Um, and I started with my first yarn mini from Henny Penny Makes and I just knit until I ran out but I had enough left that was a bit of leeway in case any of the other minis might be slightly different. And I got 13 rows and part of me <laughs> wanted to rip back and make it 12 so that it wasn't 13. But then I thought, no, don't be ridiculous. You want to use as much yarn as possible. So I stuck with 13. So this is my 13 cow. Unlucky for some, but it's not going to be unlucky for me because as you can see, it's already looking beautiful. And I've kind of ordered the minis in a vague kind of rainbow color and I've numbered them all. And I'm alternating them with the gray, which is some leftover Cascade Heritage uh, yarn. This is all four ply or fingering weight, um, which I had left over for making an advent blanket. 
I've got a good skein of that left, uh, which hopefully will be enough. And if it's not, it's readily available to get if I need to. But doesn't that look good so far? Really enjoying it. And the reason I cast this on, as well as to use the beautiful yarn, is I needed a new um, hand, well, I would call it a handbag project, something I keep in my bag, but I don't actually use a handbag, I use rucksacks. So my rucksack project, or backpack project, which is something I always have in my bag so that I can grab it if I'm you know waiting in a waiting room or stuck somewhere or in a cafe or something like that i was knitting on this at my daughter's trampolining competition at the weekend it's always nice to have a really good plain round and round knit and i cast it on on 2.75 millimeter needles with 100 stitches which i think is what the pattern actually calls for i didn't worry too much about gauge and i'm pleased with how it's looking and then I had a moment where I thought, because I, I love knitting on DPNs so much for socks, I thought, well, maybe I want to knit this on DPNs. So I ordered some of my favourite um, DPNs, which are the Smart Sticks, uh, Knit Pro Smart Sticks in 2.75 millimetre. But I ordered the longer ones. So instead of the usual size you would use for socks, which is to, um, I think, 15, no size of these yeah 15 centimeters usually these ones are 20 centimeters long so they're better for bigger projects and I will use them for future projects but I put them I put the project on these needles and started knitting and I just didn't like it as much as I liked the magic loop for this particular project so this is going to go into my needle stash for future use but other than that, I am loving this. It's really great to knit on if I'm tired, if I'm just not feeling anything more complicated, or like I say, if I'm in a place where I just need to be knitting to keep myself amused. And that is, oh, and I should say that the Litmus Cow is a pattern by Jude of Stranded Dye Works. And it's a free pattern as well. It's more of a recipe, but it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, so I think that's everything I need to say about that just look at my nose yeah other than thank you very much hillary for the beautiful yarn oh, which is still in my lap this is a look at how nice that all looks oh it's like a bag of sweets <laughs> okay so my next new cast on am i in focus i don't know why sometimes my camera just has a difficulty focusing um so yes so this new cast on is living in one of my favorite bags of all time oh there's my pen i was looking for that uh, and that is by mrs s creations this was a gift ages ago it's actually just a plain lovely red corduroy bag with this lovely strawberry uh drawstring casing it's just so lovely but because it was plain i covered it in my oh and there's her label by the way oops have I got that upside down? Yes. <laughs> there we go, Mrs. S Creations. Uh, so I've covered it in all of my favorite pins, or some of my favorite pins, I should say, because some of my favorite pins are on my pin pennant. So I've got my Moomin pins. And let me get up to show you. I've got my Moomin pins. I've got my Growing Up is optional. I've got Crafty Clegs here. I've got a funny little crab I've got one of my old original pins I've got this is probably my favorite of all time from Elliot Craft House Magic hey Barbara I've got that's Betsy makes that's from Caroline love to sew this was a gift from my friend Sarah autumn enthusiast ducky darlings Chrissy crafts life is one big whip and another gift which couldn't be more perfect lichen fancier so yeah i love it because it just makes me happy to see all these little pins i've got some other ones i want to add to it so in this bag where's the ball band here is i am using this gorgeous yarn this is the color everything's also very bright today it's probably because it's such a sunny bright day so i think things aren't coming out quite as rich in color as they are so this gorgeous yarn is by the curated yarn company It's a platinum sock base, and this is the colour. And I am making the prom queen socks 
for my daughter Lilia. I've already made, I'm gonna have to take these off of here because I'm gonna need a sock blocker. I've already made the first one. Because like I say, my sock knitting mojo has been brilliant. I took the sock off the blocker, threw the blocker on the floor and kept the sock. That's not what I needed to do, is it? Yeah, so I'm making these for Lilia. The pattern is by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, who I feel like I've mentioned a hundred times already this episode. And it is so lovely. It's another lovely lacy sock. I haven't actually blocked this, by the way, so it is a bit lumpy bumpy. I do need to block it, but I'll put it on the blocker in order to show you. So this is the Prom Queen socks. It's got this gorgeous lace pattern. Lilia loves these and she loves the colour. You can see my stitch markers there, so I know what to do with the second sock. And again, I have done this. I've done it a lot longer than I would normally because I just got a bit carried away. <laughs> kind of was just a really addictive thing to make. Uh, yeah, followed the pattern exactly the heel and everything, and the umbrella toe. I'm really, really pleased with how these have come, have come out. I'm not very far with the second sock because I got distracted by something else, which I'll show you in a minute. But the reason I'm making these, and the reason I'm making them in this color is, one moment. This is Lilia's prom dress. So she's 16 and she's currently in the middle of her GCSE exams and in a few weeks she will have her prom and we went shopping, we looked everywhere she had all kinds of ideas of dresses from JJ's house and things which gave me heart palpitations looking at them and then I said right let's just go shopping and see if we can find anything on the high street and we found this and it's actually from Bieber and she was delighted with that because obviously that's a very 60s brand and she's got 60s style Mary Jane sort of platformish shoes she's got a mixed tape handbag she's very individual Lilia um, so this is what she chose and the yarn although it's not a complete match because this is more red it was the closest thing I had and she was delighted with this colour yarn so um, yeah so that's why it, they, they're going to be her she's not wearing them with the dress but she can wear them while she's getting ready and the next day and so on Oh, speaking of proms, both my girls, well, Phoebe's at primary school, so she's finishing primary school in a few weeks, and Lily's at secondary school, or high school, and she's finishing that in a few weeks. So we have got a huge few weeks ahead of us of events and transitions and change and proms. So Phoebe's not having a prom because she's 11, they're having an end of term party, but they've taken to calling it the prom. <laughs> But it's very cute, so she's got a beautiful dress, which I'm sure I'll show you if she lets me. So that's the Prom Queen socks. Absolutely addictive pattern, really easy to memorise. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And I want to get these finished before Lilia's prom, so I think this is going to be the focus of my attention uh, this week, now that I'm feeling a bit better. Still not 100%, but I am feeling a lot better than I was. I had some really strange throat thing you can probably still hear it a bit in my voice that just knocked me for six it wasn't covid uh but there seems to be something going around our area so it's probably just that okay what else have i got to show you in works in progress right let's give you an update on lilia's dress because i have made progress this was supposed to be a birthday present but it, it was just too big a project to get finished her birthday's at the end of march it is I'm loving working on it. It's the most unusual thing I've ever crocheted. And I've been trying it on her periodically. She puts a blindfold on because she still wants it to be a surprise. And it's, I'm always amazed at how well it fits because I'm always worried when I'm making it that it's not going to fit. And then I put it on her and I realize it fits really well. So it's the Mystique dress by Hook Loops. She is not on Etsy, but she is on Payhip and uh, I will link everything below, of course. I'm all tangled up. <laughs> okay. And it is the most gorgeous dress and the colors I'm using are inspired by the project made by uh, the Silver Pebble, because that's the, the picture that my eldest daughter, Lilia, saw when she came to me and said, Mum, can you make this? So, and the yarn I'm using is, before I stand up and show you, it is, Schachenmeyer Catania. It's 100% cotton yarn. 
and it is uh, Bing Green Weight. I think it's Bing Green Weight. It might be Sport Weight, actually. But the way the pattern works, you could probably make it in any weight yarn because you kind of work out your gauge based on your gauge, if that makes sense. So you do, you do your, when you start, you do it to a certain measurement. And once you've got that measurement with whatever hook and yarn you're using, you then move on to the next stage. It's really, really good, actually. So let me see if I can demonstrate this. Obviously, she's not going to be wearing it. Well, first of all, she's not 45 and she's not going to be wearing it over a floppy old T-shirt. OK, so she's going to be wearing this with um, a little v-necked shirt underneath um, so it sits quite low I mean you could wear it like that I wouldn't again because I'm 45 um, and it goes like that and then this is the skirt part so I've got quite a lot more to do on the skirt part it needs to come down to sort of mid thigh here um, and then the straps Let's see if I can do have I done it have I crisscrossed them Yes, the straps come down like that and then there's a border here and then they'll come back round and tie in a bow there. Um, so it's so pretty and so lovely and I know she will wear it and I just can't believe that I'm making something of this kind of, I don't know, it's so fashionable. <laughs> it's so unlike me. So yeah, so as you can see I have made progress. Last time I was quite a bit up here and I hadn't transitioned into the pink. Aren't they cheerful colours? Oh, I just love that. Oh, right. And I'm making this, like I say, with the Catania yarn, uh, the Shakumaya Catania yarn, and I'm using a tulip hook, which was a gift from Rel, lovely Rel at the Dabbling Hook. Thought I should try the Clover tulip hooks. It's 3.5 millimetres, and it is a really good hook. I'm really enjoying working with it. So thank you, Rel for pointing me in that direction and enabling. And it's all living in my lovely bag that I got when I did a swap with Martha quite a few years ago now. And this is the biggest bag I have, so it's perfect for this project. And that is the Mystique dress. Did I say at the beginning that it was the Mystique? Oh, hopefully I did. Uh, okay, the next thing, I'm, I'm not gonna give you an update on my V-neck tee which I've been working on because I haven't worked on it recently. I think I've been, it's worrying me that the neck is not going to be deep enough. And I think that's putting me off working on it. Um, but I, do, I need to make a decision on that. I can't just languish. I think what I might do is put it on waist yarn, take it off the needles and maybe block it a bit or, or at least just wet it and let it dry and then see how that's sitting. And once I know that it's sitting right in the neck, cause I'd like it to be like this, like the top I'm wearing, but the V will be in the back. So it'd be like wearing the opposite way round. So you have quite a deep V at the back, but not ridiculous. You know, if it was like this, that would be fine. And if I know that it's gonna be like that, I will feel more motivated to work on it. So that's what I'm gonna do with that. Um, and then finally, I've resurrected an old whip, which you probably last, I don't know, you probably last saw towards the end of last year, maybe. Uh, but I've been working on this for years. I literally, I think over four years. So uh, it's my corner to corner moss stitch crochet blanket. And I'm making this using a combination of tutorials because I started off using the tutorial by Every Trick on the Hook, which is Polly Plum. And I'm now using a tutorial by oh, the Cookie Snob, I think. I will put it on the screen because uh, I found it a bit less confusing for the, the part where I started to decrease for my rectangle blanket because this is a rectangle shape. I've got some ends to weave in. Lovers of the subdued look away now because this is the opposite of subdued. <laughs> so this is... It's going to be a rectangle. This is the short edge, is it? Yeah, this, yeah, right. Yeah, this is the short edge. This is the long edge. And I'm now decreasing so that I'm doing the other short edge and long edge. So 
here's so it's a triangle and um, it's slowly coming straight along this edge and slowly coming up straight along this edge it's quite magical the way this works and I constantly question whether it is actually going to work I mean it's looking good so fingers crossed it will and the actual pattern you get from working that moss stitch is lovely I love the way it merges the yarn, the moss stitch in crochet is a lovely way to show off beautiful hand dyed yarn in my opinion um, you can see here just the way it it distributes it this is my I say this every time I talk about it but this one here where is it see that come on get your act together this one that's my most favorite one and that was a random mini from gamer crafting at a yarn show once it's beautiful anyway I just think the moss stitch shows off this kind of yarn really well these top three that lovely dark one there and that pink and the yellow that I'm using these were all minis that were a gift from Ellie hi Ellie <laughs> um, so they're going in there's a lot of minis and gifts and leftovers going into this which are really precious and mean a lot so overall this blanket is you know it's really going to be precious to me I don't know what I'm going to do about a border yet um, it's definitely going to need a border because otherwise I think it'll sit a bit wonky I think it needs something to finish it off and I'm wondering if maybe it needs quite a dark border almost like a, a picture frame for a Jackson Pollock or something because <laughs> it's just such a you know mishmash uh, yeah so I've really been putting some effort into this and I've made a, uh, quite a lot of progress and it gets um, easier because obviously it's getting smaller so every row I do even though this is fingering weight yarn oh, it takes so long why did I decide to make a blanket in fingering weight yarn in single crochet basically um, I don't know but it's speeding up now as the, the rows get shorter so, but I'm going to put this to one side so I don't get distracted because I would like to finish those prom socks and the dress for Lilia. So that is my resurrected whip. Okay, let's move on to patterns, shall we? This was a new uh, segment I introduced because so many patterns come to my attention or sometimes I'm sent patterns as gifts or people send me links. And it seems a shame not to share those because oh, there are just so many wonderful patterns and designers out there. So I thought I would share today some of the things that have come to my attention over the past few weeks. So the first one, I shuffle over a bit so I've got room to put pictures up. The first one is the Paint Pan Socks by Wendy Staples. It's a pattern inspired by a, water, a watercolour set basically and it's so beautiful. The pattern was sent, uh, the link to the pattern was sent to me by uh, Lynette. Thank you so much Lynette and because she thought I would like it because she knows that I like uh, drawing and painting and uh, yeah they're really lovely so thank you for sending that Lynette. Uh, the next one is actually an Etsy shop and I can't remember, I can't find the message because someone lovely on Instagram sent me this and I can't find your message so I can't remember who it was. But thank you for sharing it because I went down a whole rabbit hole with this shop. Um, okay, I'm putting the name on the screen because I can't say it. Um, the shop is based in the Netherlands and by the way, if, if you do know how to say it, let me know. I am always happy to be corrected on my pronunciation or, or, you know, not, or not corrected but, you know, just to be taught because you know language and pronunciation is a fascinating thing and I love to hear about how to say things properly. Speaking of which actually um, I spoke about getting the Radical Threads magazine which I don't have to hand from Mrs Lamyons, Ellen at Mrs Lamyons and her Instagram name which I'll put on the screen I said last time oh I can't pronounce that and it's exactly as it looks Kalak Shet Ellen but she got in touch to let me know how to pronounce it because it's her name in Cantonese and it sounds slightly different in Cantonese so it's Galoshek Ellen I hope I've said that right uh, Ellen and thank you for letting me know so I thought I'd just share that because it's really interesting isn't it how things like where Dan's from sorry I'm going off on a tangent now where Dan's from in Norfolk is he's from a place called Wyndham but it's spelt Wymontam, but it's actually pronounced Wyndham, but then that's Norfolk for you, he'll say that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, don't write in if you're in Norfolk. He is from Norfolk. He's from deepest Norfolk. I'm just repeating what he says. Uh, okay, so moving on. Why have I gone down that particular tangent? I don't know. The shop, the Etsy shop, the name of which I put on the screen, they're a professional artist selling and selling the knitting and crochet patterns supports their life as an artist. And they are amazing patterns. It's crochet and knitted items, amigurumi patterns. Can we call knitted things amigurumi? Well, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, they're all a bit different and they are very, very cute. They've even got a lobster, they've got balloon animals and uh, just amazing. So please do go and check out that shop if you're into amigurumi, which I know many, many of you are uh, because you won't be disappointed. It was, re it's really, really lovely. You'll get lost in it. Uh, I was also very lucky to be sent three different patterns from different people as gifts over the past uh, few weeks. So thank you so much for that. The first one I was sent was from Petra and it's Highway 29 by Jen Joyce Design. Um, she sent it to me just as a thank you for the vlog. So oh, thank, thank you, Petra. It was such a nice surprise. It's a DK weight halter top made in uh, cotton yarn and it's Based, uh, the inspiration is Highway 29, which I think is in California, in the Napa Valley, possibly. It's a seamless construction, a knit knitted top. And it's so lovely, and both my girls saw it, and they really, really like it. So I may be brave and give that a go uh, when I'm finished the dress, obviously, and make, make the girls one. So thank you so much, Petra. Then I was sent from Anita this really brilliant, lobster cushion pattern from Zoe Patrack Designs and uh, she's a Yorkshire based designer I think and it's, it's so sweet and the pattern is actually for the whole cushion as well as the lobster applique as well and she said she just saw that and she said I think she said it was, it was, it was like it was made for you and I agree it's absolutely perfect we love lobsters in this house and we have plenty of lobster decor but not enough <laughs> so thank you so much Anita and finally I was sent Oh, this led me down another rabbit hole, the Chicken Scratch Socks by Lauren Colby, who is Backwood Knits Co. Uh, on Ravelry. She is a homesteader with four children based in Tennessee, and her patterns are inspired by life on, on her homestead on the farm. It was sent to me, I think your name is Violet, uh, your username certainly has Violet in it, uh, because she saw me last time talking about my birthday present from lovely Suzanne, my friend Suzanne at Green Lumpkin Yarns, who sent me her chicken themed uh, yarn. Suzanne is also um, a chicken owner, like myself. And I was talking about what I could make with it. So she sent me the chicken scratch socks and they are so lovely. I think they would be perfect for that yarn. And not only that, but the designer Lauren has a few chicken themed yarns. So I am set for making chicken themed socks chicken themed yarns, chicken themed patterns I should have said. So yeah, I am all set for making chicken themed socks. <laughs> so thank you so much, uh, Violet, if that's your name. And if it's not, just thank you. <laughs> and speaking of patterns as well, I, and this will kind of lead me on to incoming stuff as well. I ordered myself the 10 year anniversary edition of Pom Pom. And I've also got a couple of other magazines. Ooh, get the pile off the bed. Uh, so I ordered the 10 year anniversary um, edition of Pom I'm laughing because I've got a piece of tissue as my bookmark, it's not. <laughs> and it's really good. I haven't finished um, looking at it properly, so I'm not going to go into detail about the patterns in here. Uh, but I wanted to just note that this is out. You get a digital download copy when you order it as well. Uh, like I say, they're celebrating their 10th anniversary and one side of the magazine is their autumn winter. And that pattern there, that gorgeous jumper, is by uh, Sylvia Watts Cherry, who I mentioned earlier. And on the other side, it is the spring summer edition. This is lovely. Love that. Um, and there's loads of articles in here. There's a really good article by uh, Ina of my no Mama's Teddy Bear. I always want to put a my at the beginning of that, Mama's Teddy Bear, who is, I need to, I, I'm going to say, she's probably one of my favourite designers and I've only ever made one of her designs, um, but everything she puts out, I just look at it and think, wow, that's amazing. Anyway, she did an interview 
um, with a, oh, hang on, let me see if, with a sh sh shashiko um, practitioner. Um, so she interviewed at Atsushi Futatsuya. I know I'm probably saying that wrong, but it says um, he is an important voice on the cultural appropriation of sashiko. And sashiko is a stitch, a Japanese stitching technique. And the interview was really, really good. It's got some wonderful pictures. Uh, and it was just really, really interesting. It just made me think about, well, something I knew nothing about, but also that issue of how people take and ancient practices and teach them. And oh, those red, oh, look at that. Madeleines with chocolate on. There's always recipes. Anyway, I'm doing that thing again where I start reading something when I should be podcasting. So just wanted to let you know that's out. I haven't finished reading it, but it looks amazing. Also, my mum, for my birthday, got me a subscription to Simply Crochet. And the first one arrived and I was a little bit like, eh. <laughs> I wasn't like that enamoured with like the projects in it, apart from the chicken. I remember I really, look at the little... <laughs> I think I might have to make the chicken. I love that. Uh, the articles were okay, and I, you know, I enjoyed the magazine. And there was also a little um, Queen Elizabeth amigurumi and things, and I enjoyed it. But I wasn't like wow. And then the second one arrived, and I was like wow. There was at least three things where I was genuinely like, oh, I really want to make that. And I really like the cover thing as well. So this is the I don't know is it issue one hundred and twenty four of Simply Crochet. And I really like this. This uses a technique called, um, oh, I can't remember. Is it Bruges Lace, I think, um, which I've never tried before. And that looks like such a simple thing to make. I'd like to try it. But I also like this floppy, floppy one here. And I love the frog. And there's also this lovely reef, this summer reef. I want to make reefs. I've got a whole book on reefs. And I haven't got around to doing it yet. Here it is. That took me forever to find. Um, yeah, a little summer reef with the beach hearts and the boats and all the sea stuff. And can we just talk for a moment about this little seagull amigurumi and its lips? <laughs> Brilliant. So I was a lot more inspired by this and I was really pleased. So I'm still halfway through reading that one as well. So that's a little bit of incoming and a little bit of patterns and that leads me nicely on to some incoming bits which I shall try to go through quite quickly because I've got a feeling I've been talking for way too long. Um, I got a gorgeous little, this was such a good idea, it makes me want to do this. Lovely May sent me a little gift, she sent me a lovely card and a letter and she sent me a bird, oh what's it called, a bird of, bird of, Alexa, stop. Honestly, nobody asked her. <laughs> Where did she pipe up from? Anyway, she sent the, the bird knitted, but flat, not stuffed. And it had the tail, which I've still got to weave in, ready to just pull tight like that. My camera's overheating. So all I had to do was stuff it and pull it tight and then weave in the end. And I've got my little, oh, um, blue bird of happiness. That's what it's called. How cool is that? What a good idea. So I'm going to weave that in and I'm going to hang that up somewhere. So thank you for that, May. If anything's changed, it's because I just had to turn my camera off for 10 minutes to let it cool down a little bit. There must be stuff I'm not mentioning. It must be suffering from the heat. That's not mentioning the weather, it's just mentioning my camera. I got um, a, a lovely birthday gift, a belated birthday gift from my friend Lily. And the colours were so lovely, I wanted to show you. First of all, she sent me this. She said she didn't know what to do with this, and she sent it to me. <laughs> and she said she dyed it in cola. No. <sighs> she dyed it in 2019. <laughs> I thought it said cola. I dyed this in 2019. Can't find a good use of it. Maybe you can. Oh, and then she suggested perhaps I might want to use it with this other yarn, which is very true. It goes 
very, very well together. So she sent me this amazing Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles. Does it have a colour? Oh, the colour is Monarch. Oh, isn't that lovely? And then the mini that she dyed, that she said might go, and she's very right. Oh, it's just so summery, isn't it? Summery, summery. Oh, that tag there, she makes those. Yeah, so those were lovely. Lovely birthday gifts, thank you, Lily. And then finally, very quickly, um, I was having a chat with Kasia on Instagram. And we were talking about books and she had some books that she wanted to pass on to Lilia. So we, arran we arranged for that to happen. Lilia was thrilled, Cassia, absolutely thrilled. Uh, they're just her thing. Thank you so much for sending them. But when she sent them, she sent in some yarn for me. And it's so pretty. It is Ruffles yarn. Are they both Ruffles yarn? Yeah. Ruffles yarn is a 20... It's a 20 gram DK mini skein in the colourway Wilting Daffs, like that. Really pretty, and that is, like I say, Ruffles yarn. And then this one is called Phoebe's Flower, and it's on their, this is their sock base. 20 gram sock platinum, yeah. And it's called Phoebe's Flower. How pretty is that? I've got a little idea of what to make with this, but whether I have the time, I don't know, but I've got a little idea. So thank you for those, Cassia. Never heard of Ruffles Yarn. Oh, she also sent me some stickers for <laughs> when I send out letters and things. And look, they're chicken stickers. <laughs> Who would have thought a couple of years ago that I would be obsessed with all things chicken? But I am. We love our chickens. Right, just had to stop and start my, my camera to change the battery, so hopefully I haven't changed the positioning too much. Right, let's move on and talk about Skillshare, shall we? Skillshare have been sponsoring some of my videos. Uh, they're an online learning community with thousands of creative classes. And over the past few weeks, I think this is the fourth time they've sponsored one of my videos, uh, I have been sharing something that I've learned with you to you know to share um, new crafts and so on. I've already shared meditative doodling, which I absolutely loved, uh, needlepoint, which I loved even more, and then last time I shared um, draw, drawing for self discovery with Mari Andrew, which I really loved as well. So it's just been getting better and better for me. Um, and this time I don't have anything physical to share with you. Um, because the classes I've been doing, not only am I only halfway through them, but that it doesn't really produce anything physical, really. I've been doing the Jonathan Van Ness class, uh, which is the ultimate self-care playbook. And that's been really good. Um, it's actually about making um, a, a kind of scrapbook um, for self-care, which I haven't actually done. And I'm not sure I'm going to, but I'm enjoying watching the process and, and picking up what he's saying. He's a very watchable person. Jonathan Van Ness is uh, the, uh, the, not the beauty, uh, the sort of hair and makeup and skincare guy from Queer Eye. I've also been doing a course about vlogging. It's called Romanticising Your Life with Carrie Cakes. She's a vlogger based in, she's a US vlogger based in Korea. And she's done a class about uh, vlogging and structuring vlogs and there's a few class projects you can do. At the time of filming I haven't done the class projects. If I have done one by the time I'm editing this I'll put it put it in now but if I'm still sitting here that means I haven't done it. <laughs> That's more likely and it's really I'm only halfway through it but it's reinforcing some of the stuff I'm already doing but it's also giving me some really good ideas for things I could be doing and ways to get inspiration for vlogs and scenes and telling stories, which is what I love to do. Um, that's why I love vlogging so much, is just telling, telling stories about things. Yeah, so there's no ads. There are structured classes with really knowledgeable teachers. You can choose to do uh, curated learning paths as well, where they will take you through a series of connected lessons to sort of build your skills from beginner to advanced, uh, which I'm thinking of doing for using Procreate. I've recently bought Pocket Procreate, or Procreate Pocket, 
and I have no idea, not even the first clue how to use it. I'm beginning to regret it. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do a Procreate course to help me with that. Uh, and you can build on your skills and really go in depth with them. Uh, what they say on the website is we want to make the creative life possible for everyone around the world and I, that's lovely isn't it and you can jo you can join in with this because the first thousand people to use the link which is in the description box and in the pinned comments underneath will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you click on the link and it will take you and it will give you all the information about how to sign up and all the small print which you know make sure you read and you can get a whole month free and a whole month of learning is really really worth it so definitely go ahead and take advantage of that right should we talk about the dodgy bag make along because i have got a winner i've actually got two winners to announce for that so the dodgy bag make along which i ran with lovely claudia of Crochet Luna, who I've just realised I meant to watch this morning to see if she's announced her winner. Because she was drawing the winner from the uh, Instagram hashtag, so I'll have to double check that. Uh, but it finished on the 5th of June, um, and I went into the Ravelry group where I'm drawing a winner from, and I included entries up to the end of, I think, the 6th of June, so that it gave a kind of day's leeway. I've now locked that thread, but there is um, at group members requests and um, ongoing chatty and very delightful thread that is always open and always busy for uh, ongoing makers of dodgy bags uh, lots of tips advice chatting and sharing of projects in there and I'll put a link to it underneath if you want to keep talking dodgy bags in there so there were so many people joining in on the Ravelry thread that I decided I would draw two winners because I've been making the dodgy bags. I thought, well, I can give the yarn that I've got as a prize, which I'll show you in a minute, along with a dodgy bag. And then I could give a dodgy bag to another winner. So I drew two numbers from the thread and they were both the same person. <laughs> so if that is not the universe telling me that that person needs to win a prize, I don't know what is. And that person was lovely Elaine. Elaine, Tree Source Limited, it's you. You're obviously very chatty in that thread because you got picked twice. And you have won the lovely yarn from Elderflower Stitches. So I just want to say a big thank you to Susie who donated this as a prize some time ago. So it's Elderflower Stitches, she's a UK based dyer, lovely Susie. And the colour is called the that words snow speckles snow speckles and it's on her oh come on camera focus it's on her super sock base isn't that lovely so delicate so that's a 75 um 25 superwash merino nylon and i'm going to send this to you elaine with the purple drawstring bag but i will put drawstring i have been known to send drawstring bags to people without drawstrings Victoria Knits, I'm looking at you. <laughs> but I am going to send this one with an actual drawstring and the yarn uh, to you. I think I've already got your address. So I think we're all right, but I'll contact you if I don't. And then, so I drew a second winner after that. So actually a third number, but the second winner. And you are gonna win the black and white bag. Uh, and I didn't show you the lining of this earlier, but it's got the lovely paisley lining in there i love this bag and it's perfect for like a sock project and it's got the, the box bottom and i drew number 339 and that is the mother thing it's jan you're in suffolk here in the uk um and i should say that both elaine and jan the two winners have both been knitting for over 50 years so between those two winners there is a hundred years of knitting experience isn't that amazing so i don't think i could have or when i say i alexa could have drawn two more worthy winners so uh jan this will be on its way to you could you get in contact with me either on ravelry or email or instagram and uh, let me know your address i hope you're watching and i will send you your bag um is there anything else i want to say about that Thank you to everyone for joining in. It was another fun year and there's still loads of dodgy bags popping up on Instagram as well. So that's a really fun hashtag 
uh, to be watching and if you have not made a dodgy bag and would like to get started uh, I have got now four tutorial videos for making really simple bags with no perfection whatsoever none of this leave a you know millimeter and three quarter seam allowance none of that it's use what you have make it up as you go along balance baked bean tins on your fabric to cut it out that kind of thing okay we're getting towards the end now so uh when we're gonna I, every podcast i like to try and talk about books and things uh, that i've been reading listening to or watching it's something i find interesting when people talk about it on their podcast so i like to let you know there's not much movement on what i'm reading i'm still reading a year in Cronenberg by jeff bunn who i keep wanting to call jeff dunn but it is jeff bunn <laughs> and really enjoying it i'm about just under halfway through now and I've really picked this up a lot this week and I've been ploughing through with it I reckon I'll be finished it in a week or so uh, yes yeah, really interesting little view on um, Brits moving to another country and, and what it's like it's um, it's written as a year and I'm at May currently so I'm really enjoying that Listening wise, I love my audiobooks. I've become slightly obsessed with audiobooks in recent months. Uh, so I recently finished A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson, which I read years ago, um, but I couldn't really remember much of. But I've listened to the audiobook that was read by William Roberts, and I really enjoyed that. And then I listened to Little Me, which is the autobiography of Matt Lucas, a comedian, Little Britain comedian, Matt Lucas, and I really enjoyed that. I seemed to listen to that really quickly because it was, you know, it was funny, it was quite light-hearted, it was honest, I enjoyed it. And now I'm listening to another Bill Bryson, uh, Notes from a Small Island, which I also read years ago and loved. And I'm loving it even more because it's slightly outdated now so it's sort of talking about things I can now remember and it's so it's nostalgic as well so uh, yeah I'm really enjoying that and it's read by the same guy uh, William Roberts and thank you just to all of you for your books and audiobook recommendations I, I keep a list of everything that everyone recommends so on audible I put it in my wish list and in Amazon I've got a wish list for um, things I add recommendations from viewers so I just want to say thank you because I read and listen to so many things off the back of recommendations from you lovely lot so keep them coming and yeah thank you very much uh watching we have been watching season four of stranger things omg <laughs> it's been so good so good and uh we're on a season break now so we binge watched like a load of them and then all of a sudden it was like stranger things will be back on the first of july we're like no <laughs> but we're watching it now <laughs> We are, uh, we, we've got too used to the, bin, the, the bingeable stuff, so now we have to wait and we're a bit like... <laughs> so we're really enjoying Stranger Things. We've also been watching Sewing Bee. We're catching up with Sewing Bee. I'm not, I'm not sure if the series is now finished, so if it has, don't tell me anything, because we're a good few episodes behind. But it's such a lovely, gentle programme. It goes well with our end-of-night hot drink. <laughs> Before we go to bed, it's very gentle. Loving the Sewing Bee. Now I've got something in my eye of course right at the last minute so hopefully I won't have to keep wildly blinking throughout this last five minutes um, and finally where we just mop up everything at the end what have I got to say oh the purple yarn has been claimed yay <laughs> Trudy the winner of the purple yarn got in touch and it is well I sent it to you yesterday Trudy so hopefully it will arrive with you soon oh what is in my eye some kind of yarn dust or something probably and um, so that's good I'm sure you'll all be relieved to know <laughs> that the purple yarn has finally found a home uh, also I wanted to mention don't forget I'm always vlogging over on this little wonderful life my latest I did a video about the jubilee weekend lately and the one that went up uh, yesterday uh, was just about um, a weekend a very sunny weekend of gardening and chickens and a lovely long hike along a very busy stretch of roads um, here in England so uh, please make sure you go and check that out if you haven't tell your friends <laughs> uh, I also wanted to say that I had a big batch of old stock of my pins so I changed supplier about a year ago for my pins and I much prefer my new supplier uh, but it meant I had a whole box of my old supply of pins just sitting doing nothing and I wasn't sure what to do with them really 
So I decided that I would discount them heavily and offer them as bulk uh, on my Etsy shop, which I've now done. So basically I'm set, I normally sell my pins for six pounds and I've put it right down to four pounds and then discounted it depending on how many you buy as well. So it's a real bargain. And my, my thinking was at this time of year, for example, if you're a teacher or a club leader and you wanna buy your class, you, might, you know, you might wanna buy a class of 30 a pin to tell them how wonderful they are or you might want to buy your I don't know your group of nurses in your care home or something or you know maybe you're a, a guides or brownies or scouts leader and I thought that might be fun and then what I've done is fashioned a way of personalizing the backing so I'll show you what I've been doing so this is my original pin it's exactly the same design it's just the colors are slightly different so you might recognize some of the names but most of this is made up so for example you could have, um, if you were doing it for a class, you could have their names, and then you could have the name of the school. So you can see here, I've, it's a fictional school, Heath High School, <laughs> class of 2022. Lily, the name you might recognize. Or maybe you, if you were like a scout leader, you could have 14th Heath Lane Scouts there, I've used as my fictional example. Or, you could just have something like that, the name and the name of the school. Or you could just have the name and a little message to let someone know how wonderful they are. Actually, I should offer these personalised things on my usual pins, shouldn't I? Hmm, I'll sort that out. But for now, it's just on these bulk ones. And here's another final example. Good luck. You can tell I'm drawing on my own experiences at the moment because my girls are both transitioning to different schools and so on. So um, yeah, so those are the options and uh, I'll put a link to those underneath just in case you are in that position and wanted to treat your class. I thought I'd let you know that I'm doing that as bulk orders and they are severely discounted, like ridiculously so. So it's definitely a bargain. And that's it. Thank you for watching and for sharing my enthusiasm for all things creative. Oh. Oh, I've just seen something on the floor that I didn't mention. I, well, I'm gonna mention it quickly now and I'm finally. I was doing a little bit of organizing. I know it's June, but I was thinking of Christmas. Um, I have been, I've been treating myself every month to Suzanne of Green Lumpkin Yarns Advent. So she's doing the monthly, so you can just pay for it monthly. And by the end of the year, you've got all of your Advent yarns. So I looked out one of my lovely wintery bags. This is my, one of my most favorite project bags. It's by Betsy Makes. Oh, my label's a bit, there you go. Betsy Makes. And it's got this wonderful, so it's kind of festive, but kind of wintery. I love the colours. I think it was the first project bag I ever bought um, at the first yarn festival I ever bought. It's got that lovely lining inside. And I have been putting all of my Green Lumpkin um, yarn, uh, little advent yarns in here already so that come uh, the 1st of December I can take this out and my advent will all be ready for me. And I'm going to start having a think about what I'm going to make with it so that I'm, I know what I'm going to be doing with my advent um, yarn at that time because I don't have a current sort of ongoing advent project at the moment. So ideas in the comments would be very much appreciated. And then in this bag here, this is also one of my most favourite bags of all time. This was a gift. Oh, I just love it. It's the snowman and I love Raymond Briggs illustrations and stories. I've got my little bauble marker there. I've got my little gingerbread house pin here. And in here is also green lumpkin yarn. So what happened is last year I treated myself to just, I think two or three of the uh, advent uh, minis because they were Christmas carol themed, Charles Dickens Christmas carol, which I love. And I opened them up and then afterwards as a gift and a surprise, Suzanne sent me the ones I hadn't got. Um, as well so I've got them all in here and I'm going to open these as well so I've got by December I'm going to have two advents which you know you can't fail to be excited about so I'm going to start planning my advent projects I think uh, I think this one will possibly be socks or maybe another litmus cow might be nice 
or a full of Minnie's hat by Barbara Knitting I Love. Ooh, the possibilities are endless. Anyway, I will now properly say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching and just for uh, being so enthusiastic about the things we all love. Until next time, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.